Are you looking for a free alternative to Zapier? Let's discover Automati, a free open source platform to automate your business processes without coding. Connect multiple apps together through flows to streamline tasks, boost productivity and save time, all without writing a single line of code. Of course, as it is open source, you can add your custom integrations or even request them on their GitHub. Before diving into the platform overview and discovering its features, let's see the options we have to start using it. You can use automatic cloud version starting at 20 euros per month with a maximum of 10,000 tasks and an unlimited number of flows and steps. You can self-deploy it by following their installation guide in their documentation. Or you can use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy the self-hosted version on the cloud provider of your choice while we take care of the installation, backups, updates and maintenance for you. To start using Automatic on our platform, head to ls.io and click on Login. Then click on Deploy my first service, search for Automatic, here it is, and select. You have the choice between different cloud providers. You can even use your own server with bring your own VM option. I would choose Hetzner, then choose between the different regions and service plans based on your needs. Once you're good, click on next. You have access to more advanced settings. Choose between the different level of support. I would keep the free included ones. And then we just have to click on create service. Once your instance and software are ready, you will receive this email. Follow the click here to get the password link. It redirects you to your administration panel on Elestio. Copy the password in your clipboard and follow the link. Type in your email and password and login. We arrive on automatic dashboard. Currently it is empty, so let's start by creating our first flow. Click on this button here. And the experience is very close to what we have in Zapier. You have a trigger that will be triggered either by an app or a webhook, which means you can connect it to literally anything. And then it will trigger one or multiple actions. We'll see it right after. But first, we need to choose an app. To help you know which apps are available, this is not the best place to look at. Instead, head to the documentation and go to the available apps section. So when you are looking for an app, let's say Discord. For Discord, for example, we can see it only can perform actions. So we have this section showing us the two possible actions we can perform on Discord send a message to a channel or create a scheduled event. But if, for example, we go to Reddit, we can see the triggers that will execute our flows, the actions, create a link post, and also the documentation to do the connection. We will see it when we will start implementing our first flow. Once you have chosen what you want to achieve, take the app you want. For this example, we'll do something with Stripe. So when we have a new event, the new balance transactions, which mean a sale occurred or a payment came into our balance. We don't have the choice of the poll interval, so every 15 minutes it will check if we have a difference in our balance. It will trigger an event only if the balance changed within our instance of Automatic. So this is what will trigger our flow. Then we need to set up a connection to Stripe. Currently, we never enable it, so click on Add New Connection. And we need a secret key and an account name. If you are not familiar with Stripe and you wonder how we find that secret key, you can follow the documentation link. It will redirect you exactly where you need, so in Stripe and in the connection section. So it tells you exactly the steps to get your keys. I have this demo account I can use. I'm in test mode. Head to Developers, then to API Keys, and I need the secret key. So because it is a test account, it will display it to me and copy. Now you have your key. Simply click here and paste it. And account name, it is for you. So if you enable multiple Stripe accounts, you can find them easily. I will just name it Demo Stripe and submit. Perfect. Now we can click on Continue. And we can run a test to see if it's correctly connecting it to Stripe. And we can see that it successfully fetched some data from our Stripe account. Then let's hit continue. We have our trigger. Now we need to perform action based on this trigger. You can directly integrate another app. For example, what we will want to do is to send a message on Slack and say, OK, good news, we have made a new sale. But let's say we don't want always to perform this action. 
what we could do is in between add another action and there are different apps that are not integrations they are workflow logics for example there is delay it is in the documentation so you can delay for so it will delay the execution of triggering the action honestly i'm not a big fan that they mixed real providers with built-in function i understand the logic because they all have actions and connections and and trigger for some but it's not ideal to find them one of the other built-in app that is very useful is filter which is a basic if else condition. If it match a certain condition, then it triggers the action, otherwise it doesn't. In the same kind of thing, you have the formatter, which can help you replace some strings into something else. But let's say we don't want any step in between, but we can do advanced workflow. Let's delete it and we will directly trigger our Slack action. So again, we need to choose what we want to do. We can find a message, find a user by email, send a message to a channel or send a direct message. With those actions, you can see that you could chain them. For example, you will find a user and then another action, you will send a direct message to him. But let's keep it simple. We'll just send a message to a channel. Continue. And as we had for the Stripe, we need to create a connection to Slack. Add new connection and open the documentation to learn how to do it. This one is a bit more complicated, but you have all the guidelines in the documentation. Go to the link. Automatically, it wants to create a new app. They say us create it from scratch and let's name it demo automatic two because I already did a test before and select a workspace. I will took LSTO demos and create app. We need to copy the client ID and client secret. Here is my client ID. I put it as my API key. I also take the client secret, paste it here. By the way, I'm showing you the values because it is demo account that I will delete, but be sure to not expose it online, then submit. But we have an error because I submit before I finish the configuration. So let's go back, copy the OAuth redirect URL. We need to go to OAuth and permission and to paste it. Where is it? Here. Add the URL, add and save URLs. Almost good. The last step, bot token scopes and add chat right dot customize. It's just below scopes. Add it. Chat right dot customize. It will automatically add chat right. Perfect. And we are good. Well, I think we are good. Let's hit submit again. This time, instead of showing me an error, it is telling me what this app will be able to do. Let's allow the integration. And now we are able to choose this connection. Let's hit continue. And we need to set up the action. We want it to perform on one of the channel. So I have three channel, general, demo and random. Let's choose demo. And inside we can start typing something. So awesome we just made a new sale but you can insert data from the previous actions and format so currently we only have stripe and the data available are id fee net so let's take net and it will be included in our message then you have the choice to send it as a bot or no we'll keep it to no and it will send it as my user so let's continue and test the action. They are telling me that it has been successfully sent, but do I trust them? And yes, I do. I can see that in demo, it just sent the message. This is just an example, but you can see that we successfully made a link between Stripe and Slack without a single line of code. Once you are happy with your integration, click on continue. You can add other actions or publish it. So let's publish it, it's ready, and, and every time a Stripe change occurs, it will send a new message in our Slack. We can name our flow for a better organization. So new sale on Stripe. Perfect. Now let's go back to the list of our flows. And if you have other processes to automate, you just have to go to flows and continue creating your flows using one of the available apps, or if one isn't in the list yet. You can go to request integration and they tell you how to request them. So you have to go to their GitHub inside the GitHub issues section. 
once you are there, don't directly create a new issue asking for one. You can search if it's already one open request. And let's say you want also click send SMS integration. You could say, yes, please, it will be helpful to me. And it might accelerate the process before someone does it. Or if you are a developer able to do those integrations, that documentation is pretty well done. You can look at the build integrations guide, follow the step and integrate your product. It's a win-win situation because it will also add visibility to your product. And of course, you always have the webhook solution to catch a webhook and to perform action based on it, triggered by your front end or back end or anything else. Let's say you have accumulated multiple flows and multiple use Stripe or Slack or anything else. You can go to my apps and see the list of connected applications. So if you need to update the credential or the app used, for example, on Slack, you can edit the connection here and it will reconnect it to all the flows linked to this application. The same if you want to cut access to one of them, go in the apps, close it, and it will automatically remove it from all the flows. Then inside the executions, you can see everything that happened, every execution of your flows. So first, we created our Stripe connection, so it was a test run. You can see the data in, it's nothing because it's the root one, and data out, it had all the data we have. So if we go back to execution and to the second one, you can see that this time we had Stripe, data out, it's the same, and then it called the Slack action with this data in, and it also has data out that you could link to other actions to create more advanced flows. It's ideal to debug your flows to see each step, what it does, to monitor it and debug if ever it's needed. Then in the bottom left, you have the notifications. And what it is, is more a change log. It's showing the different release of Automatic, what has been fixed, the new features. So you can keep track of the evolution of Automatic, which is an early stage product. If you are not alone working on your business, go on the top right to the admin section, user management, and you can add other users. Let's add John Doe. You type the password yourself, create it. And currently we can see they have all the role admin and we are not able to update it. So I guess it's a work in progress feature. And in the future version of Automatic, we, can, we could see role-based permissions. As always, if you want to give it a try, also have a look at the documentation. It might show you features that I didn't cover in this platform overview. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Automatic with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, I recommend you watch this video available here.